Hi, and welcome to the Tomato Timer, a podcast about learning to learn. I'm Z from Xenos, and I'm tuning in live with experts around the world asking your questions and hearing their stories. All before the timer goes off. 24 minutes and 39 seconds to go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode four. And today we have with us Tom Cassidy. Tom studied physics at Oxford. He went on to do his teacher training at King's College London, and he's taught and led schools internationally across the UK, Spain, and Hong Kong. And now he's joining us from Qingdao in China, where he's setting up another series of international schools. He's also written several books on problem solving. He's published in six languages, and he has some pretty cool ideas in learning and education. Hey, Tom, how are you doing? To be here on this podcast, I'm actually at a beach in Qingdao in China. So if you hear any background noise, I apologize for that. It's the waves or the party. <laughs> well, Tom, I wanted to have the central idea for this kind of chat to be how to become a learning machine. So we're all pretty good at, you know, sitting down and trying to memorize stuff for hours. But are we ever like actually learning stuff well or not? It's, it's kind of difficult for us to tell. And one of the questions uh, which we were asked a couple of days ago was that how do we learn? Should we learn smarter or harder? Should we work harder or smarter? What are your thoughts on that? Great. Great question. I mean, everybody wants to be able to get the best return on their investment of anything. So if you're going to dedicate a certain amount of time to achieve any result, you want to work as efficiently as possible, of course. I would say that where schools fail most people is they don't really teach them to be effective with their time. And it's not anybody's fault. It's just that Things that are very, very well known by some people are not mainstream enough to have made it to education establishments around the world. And these individuals that are teaching most people in their schools, they didn't learn this way themselves. So it's almost impossible for you to be able to teach a new way of learning different from the way you actually learned. We all have this approach, which is, oh, well, this worked for me, so this will work for you. And if you haven't tried other things and don't know them, then you won't assume that there is anything better in the first place. Tell me a bit about the concept of bringing this whole, like, so you, you've said that, like, the education, like, lots of us in the educational field haven't really been given this, or, or we've been taught this traditional method of rote memorization and all that. So what are, why, were, why did you get this idea, these different ideas? What, what kind of field did you see different ways of implementing, like, not just learning, but doing stuff faster? Yeah, again, great question. I mean, I'm basically lazy, really lazy. And so I'm always looking for a way to shortcut. I'm always looking for a way to optimize things. And I I don't know whether you um, know much about sort of computer programming, but the best people to program computers or write code are the ones that are lazy, that want to think the easiest way to do something. And a lazy person will nearly always try and find the most efficient way of doing something. So I, I would say like all human beings are really basically wanting to make things as easy as possible. And in fact, beautifully, there is a science um, principle. It's called, for anyone who goes on to university and studies this, they'll, they'll read about the uh, principle of least action, which explains the trajectory of, of planets, um, the trajectory of a ball as you throw it through a parabola. And it's, also to, it's, it's all to do with minimizing the difference between the kinetic energy and the potential energy of, of a system. And it's called the principle of least action. And you can apply that to everything. And humans are kind of the same, really. We want to do the least amount of work and get the most results. And and sort of a a great example of this is, right, you know, 50 years ago, maybe longer, maybe 60 years ago, you'd never have thought that any individual would be able to get all the world's information from, I mean, forget about computers, just go back a few years and just think about TV. You'll be able to get news, you'll be able to get shows from anywhere around the world delivered straight to your living room, straight to your own house. You'll be able to get this, right? And you know what? You'll reach a stage where if you can't find your remote control, you won't even walk two yards to the TV to change the channel. You just won't watch the TV, right? (laughs) That's how ridiculous it has become. People totally yeah, we do that, right? I mean, uh, I, go, I, I sometimes I don't even bother turning the TV on in a hotel I stay in because I, you know, I, I can't even be bothered to work out how to re- to change the remote control. So we absolutely want the easiest way and the, um, uh, the the shortest cut of doing things. And I suppose I was always looking for that. And so I always thought, you know, is this the right way to do that? Is this the smartest way to do that? And usually, usually a starting point is look at the opposite to what everyone is doing. Sometimes that leads nowhere, 
but a few times that leads exactly to the to the right what well, or, or to, to a shortcut so if you want to know how to um to anything you want to go to the end and find out what is the end result what do people do what are people like who actually know how to do this how do they think if someone is really good at solving maths problems what is going through their mind when they're approaching the problem and just ask them don't worry about trying to learn stuff from a book don't worry about you know what your teacher says one of your friends will be better at just about everything than you are if one person will be better at maths one person will be better at physics one person will be better at chemistry or french or english or whatever find out what they do ask them how they think how do they approach things and that's so that's one tip go to people that are already good at something and then ask them they could be a year or two ahead of you in school they could be you know a cousin an uncle they could be something like that if you don't have anyone close to you go online and ask people how they approach things yeah you mentioned something about like looking at the kind of the, the end result and then kind of almost working backwards and that reminds me of one of the concepts that we've discussed quite a lot in the context of education we speak about reverse learning um so how about you give us a bit more information on that well reverse learning is brilliant because i got the original idea actually i mean a few people have written about reverse learning but i started thinking about it a while back i was in hong kong a long time ago and um i was i was reading about project planning and project management and 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 the problem with very smart people is that if we say for example let's get a let's let's put a man on the moon do we have anything yet no we don't have anything at all we just have ourselves and some money what would we do the smart group of people by the time you've got five or six smart people they'll all have completely different ways to start they'll have different ideas about what's the most important thing to do first three on the end position if they actually go back step by step then they end up with a, a reasonable place to start and it's just a really really good way to think so i started thinking oh i wonder if i could do that with exams and say i want to learn a subject the end result is i have to be able to produce this a certain level of performance in an exam what would that look like well okay so obviously a lot of people do past papers anyway but what if you did past papers as the very starting point day 1 before you even started the subject you had to look at the end goal and you had to look at oh this is what we're going to have to do let's work out first of all what you have to be able to do in order to be able to answer these questions so one of the things you've got to do is you've got to be able to understand what all the terminology is what the actual words are what are what are the basic facts of this particular body of knowledge that you're trying to learn you've got to understand the words so there's a huge amount of learning there that you can just go i don't even know what that word means so it's up to me to find out and if you then do that yourself you save a huge amount of time about what's important and what isn't and so there's the reverse learning in the idea of working out the end goal and how to achieve it and then there's the reverse learning problem by problem you literally look at the answer to a problem and they say oh just before this problem was solved what did it look like and in order to do this effectively you really need to have enough full model answers to work backwards through because you need to then see what is happening each time that's quite con- like in the context of math or even like physics problem or problems which actually have like some sort of numeric or a logical method to do something with that's probably like do you mean like like you have the certain steps and then you try to like work out how do you get to the the previous step before you know and then you just keep going backwards well the thing is most people don't have any real problem understanding the steps really in a, if if they're explained to them but when they're explained forwards going through it all makes total sense to them when the teacher's explaining it and then what happens is they get a blank a new question that looks a little bit different and they just don't know where to start it's the starting point that's difficult they just don't know how once they get started once they're shown the two or three little th- they can do it so you don't really want that what you want is to work backwards and a, a great way of explaining this is playing chess most of the listeners will have some experience with playing chess now the way to learn chess is not learning opening moves if you want to be good at chess forget about opening moves go end game just play one king and one pawn against a king and just play that until you really know how to win from that position and then go maybe a king and a rook against a king and then you just play that position and then gradually add very small numbers of pieces and then what happens is any time you play chess all you're trying to do is get to a position that you already know and 
if you keep going backwards to more and more complex situations, you oh, I know how to do it from here kind of thing because I've played this end game so many times. And so actually, that's the same thing you should do with maths you, or, or physics or chemistry, really. Less so biology, less so the artistic subjects, of course. But any subject where there is going to be a solution, you, if you work backwards, you start to see, oh, right, and then it's just this bit, and you know the end bit. And then you keep going back until you sort of eventually know all you really need to do is just start it, and then boom, you're done. And it's, it's a very different way of learning, but it's probably, in my experience with young people, with students, it's many, many times more effective, not just in the amount of time you have to spend. I mean, we have one guy, actually from the Zenotes network. I'm not going to mention his name because he, he might get a little bit embarrassed about it. But he basically did the whole of the AS math syllabus in a week, right? Just because of this sort of like, this, this sort of approach and just looking at the end game, working out that. I mean, he's a bright kid, but you know, you can do a year's, you can do a year's work in a week if you do this. Yeah, that's true. But th this, these are some of the ideas that we were implementing at the Cambridge Leadership College as well. Because as, uh, as you've been speaking, there was a question that, should I actually start my preparation by doing past papers? And, well, when, when we did work at CLC and we had the, all those concepts running up, that's, that, that was our approach, right? We, we basically told the guys, we had those kind of monthly sprints and stuff like that, and we, we gave the guys a paper and said, just use all the tools and all the information out there. Use Wikipedia. Use every every kind of resource there is, and try to work out how to solve that that problem. And then obviously we had the we kind of like rounded it up by having an expert being brought on and kind of making sure that the the concepts weren't because what's there is there is a slightly there is a slight kind of drawback, right? That when we are when we're learning stuff on our own, we end up sometimes learning something incorrectly, and then it kind of gets ingrained in us that, and then it's like, what would you, what would you say about that? Because I've actually faced that problem in in a more in a different context. In a, because um, I always like played tennis, or I played, I did rollerblading and figure skating and all that. I always did it without having a mentor or someone teaching me before. And so I learned a lot of things, and especially in my figure skating, I've I've got to a stage where. I, I know how to do stuff, but I haven't learned the stuff in the correct, like I haven't learned the correct technique. And so that looks okay, but it doesn't, it, because I haven't done the, the backwards, but like kind of the basics, it ends up like not, I'm not able to progress as quick as others. So there's, what's, how do we like that? Okay, so the first thing I say, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't recommend this if you were only going to be on your own and isolated. I would 100% recommend this if you've got a group of like three or four of you you don't have to be in the same room, but three or four of you in a kind of a, a team or a clan to actually attack it together. Because it's so, as you say, you know, if you don't have a mentor, one, a person who is actually an expert, someone from like Cambridge University that you can just wheel in to like help resolve any difficult problems or difficult aspects or things that you just, just don't get. If you don't have that, you can get the collective power of a group of four or five people doing research and thinking and discussing and playing, well, what about this? What do you think this means? Could this mean that is just as good? And in some ways, I, I wouldn't say better, but you know what? Getting to a real good feel, an intuition for a subject that you've built yourself is super rewarding for later on. It won't be as efficient as having an expert to actually teach you. But you've taught yourself to figure skate. You could go and teach yourself to cross-country run, to ski, to, you know, um, mountain climb to scuba dive now because you've got the confidence of being able to teach yourself anything new, right? You may not be as efficient as someone who step by step had had a mentor with them the whole time to correct them, but you've learned the capacity and the tool set to then go and learn anything yourself, right? So again, what's 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 more powerful? That aligns with your mission, right? Tell us a bit more about that, because you, you just said that we have, you kind of want to develop the skill set to for us to learn anything. You know, it's it's not about learning the GCSE or the A level syllabus. It's about being able to go into university and not being provided a very like distinct syllabus or having a very good lecturer or 
having any because I've been to a couple of courses where I have had no idea what we wanted, what he wanted to get then at the end of it. Um, and it's just like piecing it together by myself. And the only reason I was able to get through those things because I had I did stuff like I had to like self study quite a few subjects myself uh, during my high school years. And so, again, I'd learned these kind of skills which weren't well, I'd studied math, but that didn't mean those skills were specifically just for the, that subject of math. It was it was a skill set that I was using across all my, not just studies, but my work as well, with regards to Zenotes, whether it was learning how to, I don't know, develop some blogs or learn how to do some graphic designing or audio editing, all that sort of stuff. So why is it important? Why is it important in this context or like this time, this moment exactly? Because things are very different now. Mm. Well, I mean, there's a lot to unpack there, uh, but what was important? So, so one piece of this is, okay, what do I really want to achieve ultimately with, with, you know, with, with my interactions with humans in the world is, well, I want each individual to be able to, I need to say, achieve your full potential and all that sort of stuff. And it sounds a bit naff to say that, but genuinely, the, the only collection of atoms and molecules in the certain configuration that is Zubair Jun Jr. Is, is, is the way it's done in you, right? So there's a huge amount of like, physicality and the universe's work in producing you and only you can do the things that you can do right now if you end up doing the things that you can do that only you can do everybody wins if you end up doing something that a lot of other people can do we don't the universe sort of misses out i miss out the world isn't as great so on a super high level i want everyone to be able to fully actualize their uniqueness and and like to take responsibility for it as well to take responsibility for the fact that they are unique and that only they can do that the thing that they can do and ignore that voice in their head which says yeah but this is a bit waffly and blah i'm not that special and all that sort of stuff my goodness a lot of people did not make it to today right <laughs> a lot of gene lines died out there's a most people in the past were killed and and you know through conflict through fighting through disease you know, an awful lot of people ended up dying. And somehow your genes, if you're listening to this, somehow your genes got you through to today. So you're, you're flipping miracles statistically, as, as right? So, that's, so, so the, the, you know, yeah, exactly. Vanishingly small. It took billions of years even to get a planet, right? Let alone life, and then let alone life that can be aware of itself and, you know, start digging stuff out of the ground and turning it into phones and skyscrapers. And the fact that I'm on a beach in Qingdao, China, and talking to thousands of people around the world in over a period of time because it will be recorded and then broadcast, this is remarkable. So the first thing is, I'm a selfish person, and I want to live in a world that is as, be as good as it can be. And one way to do that is to give people the skill set to go and learn anything new fast so that they can actualize their full potential so i don't want to just get people gcses or just get them into a good university or whatever i want them to be in a position where they have the self-confidence the belief really the self-confidence and the techniques to be able to tackle anything and have a crack and do anything so really i'd much rather people learn those and got a b than were taught by somebody else and had a tutor and got an a because the world will be better now you go, oh, yeah, but my parents want me to get an A. I want to get an A. I'd rather have a tutor. I'd rather... Yeah, of course you would. Because at the measurement of getting into university, you'll do better with an A than a B. But the measurement of doing well in life and in a job, I mean, there is no syllabus for life. So if you've always learned how to do stuff with a syllabus, you will do brilliantly at school, right? And you'll probably do okay in university. Yeah, and even at jobs, I'm like... With like, I, I've I've noticed that like especially right now when I'm like looking at people, especially students in my year who are applying for jobs, most of them have not studied like anything remotely to what they're applying for. Math degrees, even geography degrees, are applying for things in banking and finance, in social media and all that sort of stuff. And it's it's crazy because that means that what our university degree kind of meant was not really anything to do with the the actual like raw material we learned the very few degrees now that you're actually like kind of like going from hey this is my degree this is why i've specialized and this is where i want it this is what i'm going to be doing for the rest of my life it's it's changing so fast 
totally. Medicine is probably the only one I can really think of where you're actually, it's, it's, it's almost like a vocational degree because what you actually study every single week, every single month, every single term is relevant to your career as a doctor. But I studied physics. I don't do much physics on a daily basis. I'm a businessman, entrepreneur, educator, doing schools. Most people that do degrees, it's not about the content. So therefore, if it's not about the content, what is the only point of it? It's just a playground in which you can learn the skills. It's the raw material. It's your laboratory for actually getting good at learning new stuff fast, getting really quickly to the heart of a problem, working out what is important, what is not important, what's the best way to master this topic. You know what I would do? If I had my time again at university, I would literally, I'd probably pay people the year above or two years above to just say, look, but I'm just about to do this topic on thermodynamics in first year. Tell me what, what are the key points here? What's interesting? What are the tricks? What are the things to avoid? And then I'd have a bit of a sense of it. And then I'd go in and I'd really, you know, I'd, I'd, you know, I don't know why we don't do that. We sort of think we have to make all our own mistakes ourselves. Well, we're hoping to do that on this server, right? We, what we what we're trying to promote is that like once we're like especially as we're moving forward with the kind of university side of things is that once we're like that these guys who are right now studying AS or A2 when they move on to you know when they're at their universities I'm like I'd love for them to stay stick around and they're going to be the kind of the community which is going to be guiding the next generation and the next generation after that so we're trying to do that in our own little way. And the important thing is, again, it's not about content. It's about, okay, so this is how I would encourage you to start doing your own thinking within this particular. So thermodynamics, for example, well, it's kind of interesting. It's sort of a bit like a way of trying to describe stuff where there's lots of things. You know, when you've got lots of things, you can sort of apply rules which kind of work. If you've got one or two very small things, you might use quantum mechanics. You know, tiny one or two electrons, you know... Uh, hydrogen atom, maybe a helium atom, just about quantum mechanics works very well. But when you've got very large numbers of things, movement of particles, liquids, um, fluids, the weather, all those sorts of things, you really need a system, a statistical-based system. And that's kind of what it is. And if someone had sat me down and just kind of told me this is what it was, you know, I'd have a sense of what it was all about. And I'd probably be a lot more interested rather than saying it's all about bloody adi adiabatic flow and Carno engines and all sort of going, oh, I just want to drink beer and play football. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to kind of like keep moving forward in the, as we're going down the rabbit hole of what the world should look like. Tell us a bit more about, because there's a, a very common question is like, how do we stop procrastinating? What are ways that we can focus and study and work hard and so obviously we've, we've discussed some techniques on how to work smarter but that doesn't mean that we still we still need that dedication and we need to find that time in our in our day to like oh i'm gonna sit down and get this done so um you speak about well, we've discussed this a lot again as well um the 13 by 4 method and i, I kind of want to bring that up right now so that because it, it might be a concept we might run at xenos as well at some point because it's kind of remarkable how a simple framework can really transform our day-to-day -day lives. But I just want to talk about the idea, that 13 by 4 system as an example, but also systems in general to help us avoid getting to this like loop of, oh, I want to do this, but should I do this? And then you're stuck and you're thinking, oh, I, I, which paper should I do or which topic should I look at? I guess probably the, the, the most important piece of information I would explain to people is most people don't end up, don't end up not getting what they want because they didn't really want to do the work. Most people don't end up getting what they want because they didn't have a system which made it easy to do the work without having to use up a lot of willpower. You're not scared of the work. You're scared of actually kind of... If someone else is telling you what to do and someone else is forcing you to do it, you kind of do it. When it's up to you, when it involves you having to make a decision using up willpower, it's really hard. So what any system that is effective will do is it removes the decision-making. Steve Jobs said this famously. He wore the same clothes every, all the time because he didn't want to waste any of his willpower making decisions about what to wear, right? But, but Because you've got, I mean, humans are, the cognitive process that we have that we need for solving problems, that we need, 
are all as a result of chemical sort of interactions in our, you know, the, the, there's new, the, the neurobiology, if you like, of the brain. You know, there is a finite amount of stuff that you can really do in any given sort of active period. You need to sleep. We need to sleep to recharge our body. And then we have a certain number of hours of effectiveness. Now, I don't care whether you like to think. And that's time. Thank you for joining us, Tom. It was really great to hear all your tips and tricks for becoming a better learning machine. We hope you can join us in the next episode, guys. Bye-bye. And that's another episode of the Tomato Timer. If you'd like to ask your questions and join us live next week, join the Xenotes Discord server. The invite link is in the description. And to learn more about Xenotes and how a bunch of students are on a mission of making quality education available to all, go to xenotes.org. Bye for now.